On the 24th of December 2016, the badly decomposed remains of a female were found by a dog walker in a lake by Rhinomax Baga, near the railway town of Borup in Kuya municipality, 40 kilometres or just under 25 miles southwest of Copenhagen, Denmark. Danish police confirmed that the body belonged to a young woman who had mysteriously vanished five months earlier. Emily Anina Skugad Meng was born on the 31st of July 1998 in Kosoa, Denmark, to parents Helena Meng and Nikolai Skogo, and she resided with her mother, stepfather Jesper and her siblings in the city of Kosoa. At approximately 4am on Sunday the 10th of July 2016, 17-year-old Emily Meng and her three friends returned to Kosoa after a night out in Sleilse, a town located around 20 kilometres or 12 miles away. They had visited a cafe and finished their evening at a McDonald's restaurant before taking a train from Sleersa back to the city, which arrived at the platform at 3.53am, with the journey taking approximately nine minutes. A friend recalled that Emily had been charging her phone on the train. As dawn was beginning to break, the friends began their journey home. A taxi waited for them outside of Kosoa station. However, Emily chose to walk alone to her family abode, which was located near the city centre, despite her companions insisting that it would be more convenient and safer for her to take the taxi. The Meng household was less than three kilometres or just under two miles from the train station. Therefore, Emily's walk on the gravel path would not have taken long. Her friends bid her farewell, unaware that this would be the last time that Emily would be seen alive. When Emily's mother, Helena, her stepfather, Jesper, and her siblings awoke the next morning, they became concerned that their daughter was nowhere to be seen. Emily's mother, Helena, then made her way to the local St. Paul's Church, where Emily would normally be singing in the choir at that time. However, upon arriving at the church and speaking to the minister there, she realised that Emily had failed to show up at the 9.30am choir practice. This was extremely out of character for the kind and well-mannered girl. Desperate to find Emily, the Meng family went to the media, who appealed for her safe return. It was rumoured that Emily's boyfriend had broken up with her on the 9th of July, and she was understandably upset by it, allegedly planning on running away. However, these rumours were later dismissed by the authorities. The search for Emily Meng became the largest scale missing persons case in Danish history. Hundreds upon hundreds of volunteers searched through the region, and a number of sightings were called into the police, however unfortunately to no avail. The case became a storm in the Danish media, as a disappearance case with next to no evidence was extremely unusual in Denmark. Some items of interest were discovered during the searches, including a bag and a torn up shirt that looked like the black top that Emily was last seen wearing on the night she disappeared. However, it turned out that neither of these items belonged to Emily. As time progressed and no further news came to light, the Meng Skogo family became increasingly concerned that something more sinister had happened to the 17-year-old. Hope of finding Emily alive was quickly fading. Authorities were convinced that Emily had somehow met with foul play on the night she vanished. 
The day after Emily's disappearance, Danish police dispatched officers, dogs, drones, horse units, divers and aircraft crews around the area to search for her. Unfortunately, due to heavy rain, helicopters were grounded. However, a further 200 volunteers aided in the search. Early in the investigation, it was revealed that Emily's phone had been either switched off or had run out of battery power shortly after leaving Kosoa train station. A few friends noticed that Emily was marked as being active on Facebook Messenger after she vanished, but police were quick to reject it as proof that she was alive. Police scoured through CCTV footage from the train station and potential routes Emily may have taken on her way home. However, their efforts turned up few leads. They were interested in seeking out the owner of a white Hyundai i30 model from between 2011 and 2016. The vehicle was spotted on surveillance footage parked outside of the train station at 4.07am on the 10th of July 2016, and a witness stated that they saw a similar car in the area later that day. Although tips came in, no leads led to any arrests. Police were interested in communicating with a young man seen driving a car that night and also a cyclist who was seen riding on the gravel path. A witness stated that they saw a young woman who resembled Emily walking over the Helskov Bridge and because she would have had to go over a canal, accidental death was initially not ruled out by investigators. The city, forests, lakes, streams, as well as the canals were scoured, but no answers were found. Authorities turned their efforts to the train route between Kosoa and Svenstrup, using specialist dog teams to help look for clues. One of the dogs returned from a search with what appeared to be blood on his muzzle and paws, however, nothing came of the canine's find. Some items were recovered near where Emily was last seen alive by the train station, however, police refused to comment further. Danish police had numerous leads over the course of the investigation, one of which led to the house of a 67-year-old man. Neighbours had supposedly heard very strange noises coming from his home during the night that Emily Meng vanished and he was reportedly acting oddly in the days leading up to the teen's disappearance. Police investigated this lead, searching his house five times, however nothing came of their searches. In the summer months of 2016, police also confirmed that they were looking into another suspect, a 33-year-old truck driver. The driver had been in the area on the night that Emily disappeared, and he was simply taken in by police due to his previous criminal record. His property was also searched and the GPS from his truck was analysed, however police found no evidence that this particular individual was involved in the case. Interestingly, however, the man was actually arrested earlier in 2018 for allegedly sexually assaulting a nine-year-old girl. Police, however, have not commented on whether more evidence has arisen regarding the case. Emily's body was then found by a member of the public at 4pm on Christmas Eve 2016, 50 kilometres or 31 miles from Kosoa. The identity of the deceased was confirmed on Christmas Day as being Emily Meng. An autopsy confirmed that she had been violently killed and subsequently dumped in the lake shortly after her death. Authorities withheld more details from the autopsy. Police have kept many of the details of this particular case close to their chests and under wraps out of the public eye. However, they announced in June 2017 that they were searching for a white vehicle that had been at a gas station on the night Emily vanished. CCTV footage that was taken at the Kosoa gas station was sent to various forensic experts to have a look at because the footage was unfortunately very bad quality. 
Police hoped that this footage would lead to some sort of break in the case, however, their hopes were dashed. According to various local sources, a witness came forward claiming to have seen a man near the lake holding something heavy at the boot of his car on the night in question. However, it is unknown if this piece of information is actually of any significance. At the time she disappeared, Emily's family offered a 200,000 Danish kroner reward for any information that could lead to her whereabouts. However, following the tragic discovery of her body, the family donated the money to charity. It was reported in January of 2020 that police are chasing DNA profiles in the residential area of Motolavai in the city after many young people refused to give their DNA to investigators. Danish police's sudden urgency to collect genetic data was reported as unexpected and out of the blue, however it is hoped by many that there may soon be a breakthrough. We may never know what truly happened to Emily Meng on that fateful night. Police have confirmed that Emily met with foul play, however they have never elaborated on the fact. Why was her life so tragically stolen? Was she followed? Was she killed by a stalker? Did she know who her assailant was? Or was she simply in the wrong place at the wrong time? Over 300 people attended a memorial service for Emily at Kosoa train station on the 26th of December 2016 and over 2,500 people lined the streets at a torchlight procession in memory of the teenager. Emily was laid to rest on the 19th of January 2017 at St Paul's Church Graveyard. The case of Emily Meng remains unsolved and her murderer's identity is a mystery. To this day, Danes continue to leave flowers and tributes at the train station where Emily Meng was last seen alive.